Wrap Arg Odd with Funk Flatten. Extract that as Hello World. Nope, three now drows. Hi, my name's Pokey Rule, and today I'm going to be talking about what just happened. Um, so let me start off by running that back uh, by keyboard. Um, hopefully that'll be clear what I was doing. Um, so I wanted to uh, wrap this function call argument with uh, the function call flatten. So um, I was a heavy Vim user by keyboard, um, so I think I do it relatively quickly by keyboard. So flatten, okay. I wrapped it in a function call, and then um, I wanted to then go and extract that function call as a new variable. So let's grab that, call it hello world, const hello world equals, and then I paste that. Um, okay, so let me try that again by voice. So let me put the cursor back where it was before, um, but it doesn't really matter because as you'll see, I don't actually use the cursor. Wrap arg odd with funk flatten. Extract that as hello world. Drowse. So that's cursorless, um, a tool that I developed on top of Talon and Visual Studio Code. Uh, but that's not where the story begins. Uh, the story begins in 2011 when I was diagnosed with repetitive strain injury from coding too much um, from when I was a little kid. Um, it's what I absolutely love to do. And uh, it was really devastating to, to be diagnosed with that and to think that I potentially wouldn't be able to code uh, again. Um, and it was a long journey from there. I got better, I got worse, I got better, I got worse. Uh, and until the beginning of this year, I discovered this amazing piece of software called Talon, which is a, a voice coding framework that allows you to basically define any commands um, and a grammar uh, to do things, to completely control your computer, um, even coding. Um, one of the challenges with uh, Talon is uh, navigating around a file. Um, a lot of people use eye trackers, but for me, it's not really an option because I like to move around a lot. Um, I like to stand, I sit, I take my, pick up my laptop, I go somewhere else, and eye trackers don't work in those sort of scenarios. Uh, so I built this uh, tool to quickly jump around the file. So I can give you a quick demo of that. Um, uh, so you see the, all these little hats on all of the tokens. So it picks one letter from each of the tokens and it decorates it. Um, either with a hat with no color or a hat with the color. If there's no color, you don't have to say the color. So I'll show you an example of that. Let's say I wanted to jump here. I would basically say the name for E. Now I don't use E, I use a word each. And so each, every different letter has a different word. So W is whale, um, O is odd, etc. So I can say, take each, drowse. So drowse just puts it to sleep. Uh, tells Talon to stop listening, and that click sound tells it to start listening. So it makes it easy for me to quickly go back and forth between talking to you and talking to Talon. Um, so you can see I can say the color. So let's say this one I would say blue fine, right? So take blue fine drowse. Okay, so that's how it started. Uh, a quick way to jump around the file. Um, but then I had this realization, which was if I can easily talk about any place within a file, why do I even need to move my cursor there at all? Um, why don't I just say what I want to have happen? So uh, for example, um, let's say I wanted to delete this. I can just say, Chuck Whale Drows. And you see, it just gets deleted. My cursor never moved. It still has foo selected. Um, so I can do all sorts of things. I can say, um, square wrap look. Drows. So that puts squares around this thing, right? Bunch of these actions, um, delete, um, co copy, um, wrapping, all, all sorts of different things. Um, uh, so that was the first step. Uh, sorry, that was the second step, rather. Um, then the third was, okay, talking about single tokens is fairly useful, but it's not that useful because oftentimes you want to operate on bigger things than just tokens. Um, so for example, uh, this entire function call, right? If I wanted to grab that, um, I have a transformation. So um, which basically takes whatever it is that I'm talking about and I can say, pick the, the function call containing it. So for example, take call air. 
drowse. So notice that that took that entire function call, right? And there's all sorts of things I can do. So uh, um, all sorts of different transformations that are defined. So if I wanted to delete this whole if statement, I could just say, chuck if error, drowse. So that deleted that. Um, so that was the next step, right? So now I can do things where I can cut, copy, whole sections, right? I could just take that function and, and grab it. Um, uh, and then, um, then the next step from there was, well, okay, so I have these hats, I kind of go full circle and back to the cursor. You know, it's called cursorless, but the cursor, there is something useful about having a cursor. So you don't need the cursor when you don't want it, but it can be useful to have the cursor. So for example, if I'm in an area, let's say, take trap, drowse. Okay, my cursor is here, right? So now I can use transformations. So for example, if I wanted to take this whole list, I could just say, take list drowse. So you can see, instead of saying one of the hats, I actually just don't say anything and it assumes I want the cursor. And one of the cool things about this is it works with multiple cursors. Um, so for example, um, let's say we have, we have this list again. Um, I'm gonna grab a few of these, take whale and fine and gust. Drowse. Okay, now I have a few cursors and I can, and then now I can say square wrap arg. Nope. Square wrap element. Drowse. So you can see it looked at where the cursor was and then it applied the transformation and the action to each of these different cursors. Um, so uh, that's um, sort of the, the core of what a cursorless can do. It's, um, it has these marks, which are these hats or cursors. It has transformations, which can modify each of these different things. Um, and it's uh, um, actions, which can alter whatever the target is. So let me give you a quick example of this in action. Uh, so let's say I wanted to take this list uh, and turn it into a simple dictionary. Um, so Take every element, copy that, push, coal gap, paste that, clear lack, lace, clear rack, race, chuck blue race, disc. So you can see I've now transformed that list um, into a dictionary. Um, Drowse. I got to remember to put it to sleep. Um, so uh, that's cursorless at a high level. Um, uh, there's, I'm still actively developing features. Um, uh, I made a bunch of new ones in the past week, uh, thanks to uh, the motivation that uh, a conference deadline was able to give me. Um, and uh, But I'm still developing more. It's been an absolute blast. I've had so much fun building this thing, building all the different transformations and then watching it all come together. And then as I'm building it, I can build it faster as I build more features. So um, I guess if I were gonna close with a lesson uh, or a, a message, uh, it would be, uh, don't let anyone tell you that your challenges are disabilities. Um, when I was diagnosed with repetitive strain injury, I thought I couldn't code um, uh, and I no longer had that ability. Um, and, uh, but now without that, I never would have found voice coding and, uh, I am now coding by voice oftentimes faster than I ever coded with a keyboard. And I have so much fun doing it. Um, I, I feel like a wizard casting spells, which is just amazing. So um, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day.